Love and hate, boy, you know that's a thin line. Make the wrong pick and flat line. Make the wrong pick and flat line. We don't talk in the water, fool, we take flight. And when there's beef, fool, you know that it's on site. Love and hate, boy, you know that's a thin line. Come on, the entertainment presents the files What's good, G Life? This right here is the San Gabriel Valley, the SGV. And the SGV is we'll be starting off with uh, the first set of neighborhoods uh, that tend to get confused with each other. Right here in the SGV, we have one of the most largest, uh, well-known, well-respected uh, neighborhoods within this area. One of the powerhouses, I guess you could say, when it comes to this, you know, street shit. And that is the Barrio Lomas. Barrio Lomas is a neighborhood that is large, well-known, dangerous. You know, gives law enforcement a hard time. Está cabrón. Lomas is very large, you know what I mean? They're said to be from 600 to 700 members uh, within the city of South San Gabriel, Rosemead, Marinary Park, and Montebello. So their turf extends from, from all those locations, um, you know, from where the from where the freeway's at. Uh, their turf extends all the way to where um, Atlantic Boulevard's at. You know, and from Atlantic Boulevard, it still stretches out to uh, to where Garfield's at. From Garfield, the turf still goes all the way to the San Gabriel uh, to San Gabriel Boulevard, um, and then back to where the freeway's at. So everything that's in the middle is their turf. You know, throughout uh, um, Gravis, throughout Del Mar Avenue, throughout uh, Garvey, throughout uh, New Avenue, throughout Hellman. Um, you know, all of that, all of that throughout Hill Drive, uh, throughout um, um, uh, Puerto Rican Grand uh, Drive. Like I said, it's a, it's a big chunk of territory, um, you know, within those areas, you know, South San Gabriel, Rosemead, Monterey Park, and even some parts of Montebello, um, to everybody's, you know, surprise. Um, within those hills, you know, because that's the reason why they're named Lomas, you know, because of the hills. Um, Back in the days, it was tough living there. You know what I mean? It, it was a it was a poor area. It didn't even have sidewalks. Um, that's how poor we're talking about when it comes to the neighborhood. You know, it was ghettos. You know, and you know that's where these families, you know, live right there. And you know, it was rough. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's a perfect recipe. You know, for disaster. Uh, you know, and you know, sparting off one of the most largest and notorious neighborhoods within the area, which is the Lomas. Um, Lomas um, neighborhood is with the business. I'm not going to go uh, so in-depth in to talk about a certain incidents that people are probably going to mention uh, when it comes to, you know, people that are incarcerated and um, and the politics behind all of that. Um, we're not here to discuss uh, none of that. Um, so if you do know of tales or whatever, uh, I would um, appreciate it if they get left off the comments, you know, when, when it comes to talking about politics and stuff like that. Uh, the internet's not the place for that. Um, but yes, this neighborhood is large. Is what the business has started in this area since the 1950s. Has been right here. Um, like I said, it's an old school barrio that's that's well known. And yes, they their territories do extend from all those cities. Even despite what the haters gonna want to say in the comments, I'm only here to call it for what it is. Uh, but like I said, the Lomas is well respected and it has no connection to the to the other Lomas set. And they've been putting it down for the SGV and continue to hold down theirs. And this right here is San Diego. And this is where we can find the other Lomas set within this area. Which is the Varro Lomas, written exactly the same. Uh, it, the only difference is this one is Lomas 26. Uh, but, you know, you tend to just see it Lomas, but Lomas 26, uh, 26 standing for 26th Street. And what's even trippier about this is that uh, this Lomas neighborhood roughly started around the 1950s as well. Um, now, I just know that they started in the 50s. I don't know which one came first. They, you know, 
They both started in the 50s, though. Um, so the 50s is, is the time frame for both Lomas gangs. Um, this one being a little bit different. When this one started, it was known as the Varro Golden Hills because it's located in Golden Hills. Um, you know, an area that, you know, back in the days, you know, had more um, whites in it. Um, but with time, you know, going more Mexican families moving in, uh, you know, it was it was a diverse uh, location to say the least and the reason why this uh, gang started to begin with is that there was a lot of white biker stoner gangs within the area you know that would bully you know the minorities bro and so they banded together to form the barrio golden hills uh, that's why you still see up golden hills or you still be you see it being referenced and all of that because originally that is what the barrio was was called and then they, they decided to change it to Lomas de Oro and then Oro Lomas um, because of the fact that they're in the hills and um, and because of the whole Golden Hills and, and all of that. That's the reason why they um, went with that name. And then um, they were kicking it right there in the alley behind uh, Broadway between uh, 25th and 26th Street. Um, that alleyway right there is where they will hang out, you know, what is known as Golden Hill Drive. And um, around nine, around the night, uh, around the nineties, they decided it, they decided to change the name to Lomas Twenty Six. Well, they agreed, to, you know, to call it Lomas Twenty Six, and that is, uh, you know, eventually what it ended up just being called. You know, so it went from Golden Hill to uh, Lomas de Oro or Oro uh, Lomas, and then to finally uh, Lomas Twenty Six uh, Street because obviously that's the heart of their hood, their domain, their dojo. It's where it goes down, you know. Um, and and this barrio, like I said, is old school. It's large. Now, the SGV one is larger than this one, obviously, because of the terrain uh, and all of that. But don't get it twisted. This Lomas neighborhood is still right here and handling business. Um, they even uh, sparked off a few car clubs, you know what I mean? Uh, like the corners, um, you know, right there on Broadway and, and 25th Street. Uh, but, yeah, this Lomas 26 neighborhood has been right here, continue to be right here and represent theirs. And, yeah, those are the two Lomas sets that... You know, are up there and uh, have no affiliation with each other. But that's what's up with the Lomas Barrio 26th Street. This right here is the east side. Uh, right here in Los Angeles in the area that is known as Boyle Heights. Now, originally, this is where you were able to find this barrio. But due to the facts that they tore down the projects, they relocated. But this area was the original home of the barrio East LA Dukes. East Los Dukes. East LA Dukes. The Dukes Gang, pues. They originally uh, started off the Aliso Village pro projects, like uh, like most of these neighborhoods um, within this area. But um, due to the fact that in 1999, they, you know, they tore down the projects, they had to relocate. And this neighborhood relocated to Cesar Chavez and uh, right there on, you know, by Michigan and First and Frickett. Um, that is where they, they, you know, established now and, and, and called it their territory. You know what I mean? Uh, still have, uh, members, uh, roaming around the old air back roads of, uh, the Elysio Village projects. Um, because it was a pretty large gang that had members, you know, spread out. Uh, that's the reason why they were able to relocate and, and, and hold down theirs, even though they had torn down the projects. Um, you know, because of the fact that they were large and they just had members, you know, spread out. Um, is the reason why they were able to survive all of that and all that while other gangs kind of just tended to dim down or um, just kind of like, you know, um, went extinct, I guess you could say. Um, but the East LA Dukes gang is still stronger than ever right here, still representing for theirs and, and holding it down. Um, like I said, it's pretty pretty large barrio. Um you know, with a, with a gang of members, and they still be, they, they got their homies putting in work, don't ever get it twisted, you know what I mean, as, you know, especially right there being the danger zone with so many vatos, you know, around, uh, but still they continue to represent theirs and, and put theirs on the map, but this is, um, the East LA Dukes gang have no connection to the other neighborhood, and uh, they continue to put theirs on the map, and this right here is the SGV. And the SGV is where we can find the next uh, set of neighborhoods that get confused, which is the East Side Dukes. Now, East Side Dukes, although um, they are known as East Side Dukes, they have no connection to the East LA Dukes because I know that uh, the East um, East Side is refer East LA is referred to as the East Side, and they have Dukes in the title. But the other one is known as East LA Dukes. They don't just write East Side Dukes. 
uh, despite what people say. Um, so that is the difference. This is East Side Dukes that wants East LA Dukes, uh, because I even heard and seen that people try to say that the um, the guys from East LA Dukes had moved to the SGV and started their neighborhood right here and called the East East Side Dukes, but that is not true. Um, that is false. Uh, the neighborhoods have no affiliation to each other, no connection to each other at all. And I do realize that there's a uh, East Side Dukes uh, in the East Coast, but that has no this neighborhood has no affiliation to that. Um, that neighborhood as well. Um, the East Side Duke started right here in the SGV. Um, their territory is close to the Santa Ana High School, uh, to, uh, by where the Sunshine Park sat. So throughout all of that, throughout uh, Valley Boulevard is where you can find this barrio. Um, you know what I'm saying? Um, right there on Villa Park Street as well. Um, you know, um, Gal Galino, Galino Street. Um, you know, they, their territory is pretty extensive, you know, uh, from Richburn um, uh, to uh, Colston Avenue, all the way to La, La Sida Road. Uh, so all of that is, you know, is what's considered their, their barrio, where you can find them roaming around. You know, their territory is not so, you know, large. And their neighborhood has always been a small neighborhood. It's never been a large neighborhood, um, you know, due to the fact that, you know, they're not that old school. And there's a lot more bigger neighborhoods within the area. And they tend to go at it with these neighborhoods, so it does, so that doesn't help. Uh, but they these this neighborhood has been holding their ground right here. These guys ain't no suckers. Hey, they put it down, homie. And I do realize that them and the guys from East LA Dukes tend to wear the same apparel. Uh, you know, which being the the college, the Dukes, obviously, um, the Devils. Um, you know, so they wear the same um, some the the same gear and throw it up awfully similar uh but they are not the same gang they're two different whole gangs and uh but this neighborhood yeah right here be holding it down and putting theirs on the map and this right here is the harbor area the harbor area is you know filled with a lot of neighborhoods uh but right here in the area that's known as lomita um is where we can find the next neighborhood that gets often confused, which is the Barrio Lomita. Barrio Lomita, yes, Lomita does have gangs, despite what people say. Um, you know, it, it is an area that does have neighborhoods in it. You know, from the Harbor Lomas to some crib sets to um, the Barrio Lomita. And Lomita and Lomas, although their names are similar, um, they're two different gangs, but they get along with each other, you know, common enemy. So, you know, alliances are made. Um, but the Lomita neighborhood was always roughly, you know, a lot more smaller. Um, they're still around despite what people want to say. They, you know, they never been a large neighborhood, but nonetheless, a neighborhood that held theirs. You know, they, they put it down. These, these guys were all suckers. Um, they were well established within the area. Um, despite, you know, the gentrification and, um, you know, the fact that, you know, there's like, Crib sets around, and you have the Harbor Lomas, which is you know obviously lar more larger than than the Lomita. But the Lomita neighborhood had theirs on lockdown. Their neighborhood was from PCH to Oak uh, to Oak Street, um, right there in the dead end side of uh, Oak Street is where their neighborhood you know was at. That was their heart of their neighborhood, their dojo, their domain. That is where they got it on and cracking. But their neighborhood did extend to the opposite end of Oak Street uh, towards uh, Lomita Boulevard. Um, they had uh, other, you know, you know, sets established, you know, within the, their blocks, which like is uh, Elshman Avenue, uh, Nirbani Avenue, Walnut Avenue, uh, Pennsylvania Avenue. Uh, but like I said, Oak Street being their, their, their main spot uh, right there in Lomita Park. Lomita Park is their... You know, that's already the danger zone. And yes, this neighborhood, uh, people I seen that they were trying to say that it, it was a skinhead gang and it was a white gang. That is not true, although they do have, uh, you know, Caucasians in their neighborhood. And um, some of their homies are mixed between, you know, Raza and whites. Um, it was never a white gang and or none of that. All of those claims are false. Um, you know, there were Chicanos, um, despite, you know, what people want to say. And they're a neighborhood that held it down. And even though, like I said, they're not up as much as, you know, these other neighborhoods, because a lot of the homies got busted because they were putting it down, homie. They were holding it down. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, don't ever get it twisted. Lomita right here. And right here, back to San Diego, where we find the next, uh, 
neighborhood that gets confused, which is the Barrio Lomita Village. Lomita Village is a neighborhood that's older than the Lomita uh, in the harbor. This Lomita neighborhood has been around since the 1950s. Uh, the neighborhood is was from uh, um, Jama Jamacha Road uh, to Skyline, from Skyline to uh, Mello Mellowbrook Drive, and from Mellowbrook Drive to uh, Billow Drive. Uh, Lomita Park being their their main domain, their dojo. And um, this barrio, Lomita Village, was separate from from the barrio that is now known as Lomita Village 70s, 60s. Um, 60s was actually uh, started by Compton Barrio 60, who the member had moved um, out here to this area and, um, you know, started a chapter. And um, so you had Lomita 60s, Lomita Village 60s, and you had Barrio Lomita village stress um and both you know at the beginning neighbors didn't get a lot you know they didn't like each other off all that much but you know due to this common enemy and, and shit like that the neighborhoods decided to merge becoming one neighborhood which is the lomita village 60s 70s uh but yes originally they were separate neighborhoods but now they're one whole neighborhood united um so but often you just see it as lomita or Lomita Village or Lomita Sesentas. There's even some older guys from Lomita Village that don't claim Sesentas, but you know, that's for a different day. Um, but yeah, so you see it up as Lomita, so you can see where the confusion lies, you know, Lomita, Lomita. But they're two different neighborhoods, have no connections with each other. And yes, this one is older than, you know, out of the two, this one is the oldest one. Um, you know what I'm saying? Um, with obviously, you know, more larger territory and, and all of that. And they have several clicas, you know, like Lomita Village had the midgets, the spiders, the little spiders, the diablos. And and that was just for the Lomita Village. And, you, and then when the Sesentas came along, it was the chicos, the juniors, the rascals, the demonios, the traviesos, and the malos. Uh, but like I said, you know, there were different neighbors that just decided to merge together. Um, but that's how you got the Lomita Village Sesentas. And... Um, this is another neighbor that has been holding it down and continue to represent theirs, but that's what's up with the Lomita Village Sesentas right there. Thank you for watching Emoti Entertainment. Make sure you like and subscribe.